Welcome to the Rise of Cryptocurrency Show, and I have a really brilliant person uh, for us today, an interview that will really resonate with people who are either bullish, bearish, or just interested in blockchain, cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin in general, tech, uh, and everything that's going on in the world. We're going to get uh, inside of the heads of, of one of the uh, most successful venture capitalists uh, in the tech sector, for sure. Uh, a guy who called the Bitcoin 10,000 to the day almost, and is very famous for uh, Bitcoin 250,000 prediction, which is yet uh, in the works. It's a four-year prediction, and we're going to get into this. Um, founder of Draper Associates, which is a, the venture firm, and obviously Draper University, which is the school for entrepreneurs. Timothy Draper is there with us, and uh, I really appreciate it, sir. Thanks for uh, coming on. Great. Thanks for having me. Well, w last time we talked, really different uh, environment. Uh, it was the end of 2017, and uh, lots of lots of mania um, back then. Now, lots of lots of pessimism and, and uh, darkness for the retail crowd. <clears throat> Behind the scenes, I know that um, not not a lot has changed. People are plugging in, coming in to, to work every day, developing, um, you know, looking at new angles to uh, to build the blockchain economy and and uh, uh, cryptocurrencies in general, Bitcoin. So lots of things going on behind the scenes. Obviously, some heavy hitters getting into uh, uh, bucked, and, and um, um, you know we're gonna get all into this. But obviously, what people are always interested when they get you on the phone is, do you stand by that quarter mil prediction for Bitcoin, and uh, what is, what is the time horizon on it? Are are you worried? Are you concerned about it? I know you didn't predict anything uh, with regard to your uh, uh, internal organs or important organs like uh, another person. Um, who predicted like one million? Or I'll, uh, <coughs> he said, I'll cut my dick off. But um, <laughs> if you remember that, um, <laughs> um, but but uh, you know, being less eccentric, what what are we uh, looking into here? Uh, obviously, Bitcoin trading at about uh, thirty six hundred as we're doing this interview. Yeah. Well, you know, I the reason I made the four year prediction because is because that's an easier prediction to make. Um, these uh, short term swings, you know, one year it's going to be down, another year it's going to be up, next year it's going to be down, another year it's going to be up. Um, that that has a lot to do with psychology and sociology and what what um, what people's uh, impressions are, but. The 250,000 uh, in four years is really because by then I, I expect all of these amazing um, products to be out uh, that are being built around Bitcoin. And actually, um, in some ways, it's actually good to have people not check their Bitcoin prices every day, but to but to stay heads down and build build out the engineering required. So that the rest of us can um, can live in a decentralized, frictionless, open, global world. Uh, this is really one of the one of the greatest technologies that that humans have ever um, have ever gotten a chance to participate in. And I suspect that uh, there will be so many changes that there are going to be a lot of um, People fighting against it because a lot of people don't like change. They say, "Hey, don't mess with what I've got." Uh, but then there are going to be those of us who who uh, embrace change and embrace a, a more exciting and dynamic and um, and actually peaceful and uh, and possibly uh, borderless world. This is really one of the great um, things that's ever happened with humanity. I mean, it's it's right up there with, you know, the invention of fire and the wheel and and the internet and uh, and uh, a uh, <coughs> and transport all the transportation methods that we have uh, and all the communications methods that we have. This is. This is just so exciting because what it can do for humanity um, is to take us to another level. It can take us to a place where we are 
um, thinking about things in as one big world and uh, and slowly but surely the borders become less and less relevant uh, okay. yeah, I, go ahead. I, I want to ask you Tim look the the you know in the end of 2017 uh, we saw people thinking hey blockchain is, is the solution to all problems everything will be better um, and um, obviously putting a lot of uh, euphoria into the short term uh, thinking that this is going to this is going to replace the dollar this is digital gold everything like that uh, obviously 2018 becoming a very different sort of vibe and environment um, I want to ask you what re what's really going on behind the scenes on an everyday basis with this economy uh, how are developers really improving Bitcoin really preparing it how are, how uh, is the entire blockchain industry where is it migrating towards what what sectors are really um, starting to embrace blockchain technology uh, is it getting profitable for the companies that are behind it and um, where does uh, Draper such what do you guys do uh, with regards to this obviously it's a cap it's a um, it's a great time to be bargain hunting it's it's not um, uh, euphoric anymore and I, I assume there's many opportunities out there for companies that have a lot of cash and, and the uh, in-house analysts to uh, to look at deals yeah every technology goes through this life cycle there is there is uh, doubt it starts with doubt and then it goes into euphoria where they say oh my god anything can happen here and then it goes through disenchantment where they say, hey, it hasn't happened yet. People are much more impatient than, uh, than they uh, need to be on a, on a new technology. And then over time, it becomes even more exciting and more um, uh, transformative than, uh, than anybody even imagined. And that's what happened with the Internet. We went through the. The, the doubts at the beginning where people said, I'm not putting my credit card on the Internet. Or they said, um, yeah, what can you do with it? You can just, uh, you know, s search for, you know, uh, the NORAD database. And, and, you know, there's some crazy guy selling diamonds on there. And that was kind of all there was. And then it went through this euphoria where everybody went dot com this, dot com that. Everything was so exciting. And then it went through disenchantment where, uh, where they said, Hey, this hasn't happened yet. Um, and so well, pets.com and all that stuff all died off. Uh, but then it became bigger and more extraordinary than any of us ever imagined with Amazon and Google and Facebook and all the major changes, Uber and Airbnb, all these amazing changes that have happened throughout the world because of the Internet. Well, now we've got another technology, and it's gone through the doubt phase where at the very beginning when people were kind of saying, here, you know, I'll take the pizza for 10,000 Bitcoin, um, and uh, and everybody was saying, oh, it's worthless, meaningless, whatever. And then it went through, you know, all that uh, stuff with Silk Road. Then we went through the euphoric period, and that was 2017. And everybody was super excited and thought, wow, this is everything is going to be so awesome. Uh, well, now we're going through disenchantment while the engineers are continuing to build. And now I'm going to tell you why I think that Bitcoin will replace all the various currencies out there, uh, Bitcoin or some other crypto, but I think it's going to be Bitcoin um, because all the engineers are working to make it so that um, that people can use Bitcoin for everything they can use dollars for today and more. So things like micropayments that can't be done with dollars, but can be done with Bitcoin, things like you know, paying all the people who help in a Star Wars movie uh, every time somebody buys a ticket. Um, that kind of, uh, or, or giving you guys, giving the press uh, micro payment tips or, um, or credit for all the, the 
um, content that they deliver. All of that um, is now going to be possible. And so, so everything a, you can use a dollar for, you're going to be able to use Bitcoin for and more. Uh, you're going to be able to use more. I mean, Bitcoin can be used for more. Um, so people are going to have a choice. They're going to say, do I want to use a political currency that's tied to some political party doing what it is they want to do with it? Or do I want to use this decentralized global currency that I can pull down anywhere in the world? I don't have big tariffs on it. I don't have big um, uh, uh, problems, uh, you know, moving it. I don't have to pay a big um, uh, commission when when American Express or Western Union brings it across the borders. I um, I can uh, I can do all the things that that a dollar can do, but I can do so much more. And this one's decentralized, and it's not tied to any political force, um, and it's better. And so people are going to move to the better currency. I I just believe that in my heart. Um, and I think it'll, <clears throat> I mean, it's probably going to start with countries like, uh, you know, Nigeria, where the Naira drops about 30% a year, uh, in any way. And the, uh, and maybe, uh, Argentina or Venezuela, where the peso or the boulevard drop about 30% a year on average. Uh, so why wouldn't you use a currency that doesn't have that horrible inflationary uh, s system in it? So this is one of the <coughs> – this is the, the, the disenchantment period, but um, I, I think we're probably a couple of years, three years from when everybody starts really um, – saying, oh, wow, I can use that for this, I can use it for this, I can use it for this. And uh, and that's why my prediction in four years is that um, that it's going to be that a, a very large part of the world currency economy. So, you know, go Bitcoin. Now, uh, Tim, you know, uh, when, when it comes to, um, to the blockchain technology itself, um, is there uh, what what are the profit angles that companies are looking to capitalize on right now? Um, and I know that the, there are many companies who are experts or trying to be experts at tokenizing, creating tokens for companies that want their own coin to circulate within uh, their customers, uh, ideally to to uh, replace the loyalty cards and everything like that that's happening right now. Um, it, could you talk about more what is going on in terms of profitability uh, towards uh, blockchain companies and companies that that deal with uh, technologies that are based on the on the blockchain, not crypt, not the cryptocurrency side of things? Yeah. Um, well, um, Bitcoin and all its associated technologies, the blockchain, smart contracts, all the artificial intelligence that's coming along, are all going to be tied to data. And uh, with that data, um, the blockchain actually uh, firms up the data. It, it makes it more uh, where you where you can't really change it, so it's permanent. And um, and with a smart contract, you can you can then uh, put any kind of a deal that you make into software. And the uh, and using artificial intelligence with with data that can't be changed, um, I mean that is like permanent data, uh, can be an incredible force, and uh, and that I believe is what's coming, and that that's going to change healthcare, it's going to change uh, finance, it's definitely going to change accounting, because the blockchain already does all the accounting. Um, so I think, uh, you know, your accountant will have, will be freed up to help you in other ways, but certainly not to check your numbers because the numbers will be 
uh, solid and on the blockchain. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, the legal profession, those guys are going to, um, have changes too, because they're not going to have to do all the mundane tasks of putting a deal together. Cause that deal will be written into software where everybody agrees and clicks the button and that's the way it goes. <laughs> and I think healthcare is going to be very different because we're going to control our own data. And that data is going to include everything from your healthcare records, your blood test results, your genetic history, your Fitbit results, where you've been, who you've met, where you've had for breakfast, all that stuff. And that will, uh, through artificial intelligence, be able to do a much better job at diagnosing your uh, problems than uh, than any um, any doctor ever could, uh, because it's going to have so much more data. And combined with a doctor, it's going to be incredibly valuable, because the doctor will be the one who who determines whether you know, oh, it's all in your head, or yes, this is a real problem. Because um, I think that the the one one thing artificial intelligence is a ways off from is determining uh, if a disease is just in per, in a person's head, like just it's just psychological. Tim, the uh, I have one last question for you. Um, when when we talk about uh, Bitcoin, there are many many reasons why people retail people uh, buy Bitcoin as an investment. Um, and not a lot of reasons currently that people use it uh, for transactions because obviously it's not accepted in the majority of businesses, uh, definitely not in the Western world. So um, when they when people buy it for investment and they assume that somebody in the future will pay more for it because it's the main reason to to invest in a, in a in anything that uh, doesn't pay a cash flow or dividend. Um, do they do that because they're they're fearing the U.S. dollar uh, as, as this is a form of digital gold? Do they do that because they're tech oriented and they love the idea? What are the reasons, in your opinion, that people will be willing to pay uh, so much for uh, for one Bitcoin? Um, <clears throat> well, I think the the whole key is that that uh, Bitcoin's not an investment. It is a currency, and I guess people do invest in currencies, but usually they use them for uh, transactions. And the more transactions and the more accepted a currency is, the more valuable it becomes, <clears throat> um, which is why people would much rather hold a dollar than a Nigerian Naira. Um, but I think they'd rather hold a Bitcoin than a dollar. And I think that uh, those people who are buying Bitcoin are saying, hey, this is the future of currency. This Bitcoin may be worth a lot more, but it's certainly the future of currency. So uh, so I might as well uh, buy some now. Uh, and and a lot of people are holding on to it. <coughs> but uh, one thing I would recommend to all the people who are sort of Bitcoin curious is go into all the retail stores that they see and wherever they are, just say, do you take Bitcoin? And what it does is it, it starts moving those retail stores into the direction of, of thinking about taking Bitcoin. And what you'll learn is, well, most people say, we'll say, no, we don't take Bitcoin because uh, the technology is not there for us yet. And I think that's going to happen. And when that happens, uh, you know, bar the door, it could end up being worth uh, a lot of money because it's it'll spread throughout society. And people will will basically just want to hold it rather than holding dollars or Nigerian Naira or pesos. Um, so that's really uh, it's funny, it's not really an investment unless you're thinking of it as an investment in society, um, the future of society. Society will really advance at a much faster rate um, 
with Bitcoin than they would be able to with uh, political currency. Oh, no doubt about that. Tim, I, I really want to thank you for uh, for uh, taking the time here. And where can people check out uh, Draper University? Oh, go to draperu.com. And uh, yeah, and it, it's a great place, uh, very transformative. Uh, people go through Draper University and they come out heroes. Fantastic. Tim, thank you very much. Okay, my pleasure. Bye-bye.